Hello everyone, it's Lynn here, back again to do another video as I sit down and get comfy um, so we can start this topic. So, this video is actually based on a couple other videos I have been watching on YouTube where I got the idea about my next topic I wanted to talk to you guys about, give you my thoughts and opinions, and my experience with, with um, each of them. So. This video is going to be about talking about the misconceptions about cosplay and conventions. And as all of you guys know who are in the cosplay and convention world, have gone to them, or are just interested in possibly going in the future, there are a lot of misconceptions that surround the cosplay community, people that dress up or make cosplay costumes, or people that just go to conventions in general. And um, I've kind of put together a small list of the most common misconceptions, and I'm going to bring up each one and just talk to you guys about what I think about it, my experience with dealing with it, and what I give um, advice-wise for you guys. So there is five misconceptions. So number one that I'm going to talk about is that there is some sort of age limit or restriction about how old you have to be to do cosplay. So this goes both ways, either one, you're too young to do cosplay and you have to be a certain age, or two, there is an age restriction where once you get too old, you are now considered to be too old to dress up and cosplay. I 100% feel that this is totally wrong and incorrect. There is no age limit to doing cosplay, dressing up, or going to conventions. Um, I think this kind of stems from people feeling like maybe certain cosplay costumes are age inappropriate for people under a certain age, which I can definitely understand, um, considering there are a lot of movies and shows out there that if I were to see someone that was underage dressing up as one of these characters, I myself would feel uncomfortable. However, I feel like most people understand this and know this, and kids that are underage do not dress up this way. So, um, Realistically, I have seen many, many different age groups at conventions. I have seen everywhere from babies and toddlers that can't talk, that are literally being held by their parents the entire time dressed up, or also people that are elderly that go to conventions and dress up as characters. I think both are totally awesome. When you bring a child that's underage and getting them, you know, interested in this like creative, fun lifestyle, I think that's an awesome thing to do, um, especially for families that cosplay together. I know a lot of people who go to conventions with their significant others, maybe their husband or wife, and this is just a fun thing to keep in the family. And then on the other side, we have people that are elderly that dress up and go to conventions, which is awesome. There is no age limit. Um, some of the best cosplays I've ever seen have actually been elderly people. One of my favorites being Uncle Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender. And I actually um, met him at Soccer Con one year and he gave me a Pai Sha piece. And I was so excited. I thought his costume was like spot on. He looked exactly like the character. So if you put an age limit on something like that, you're gonna lose all those fun characters that are little kids or that are elderly people. Um, the other thing to bring into consideration when talking about this also is that some conventions do have age limits on what you're allowed to go to and what you're allowed to do. Mostly that there is a curfew in the evening, usually it's like 12 o'clock, like midnight, where they kick everyone out of the convention center that is under 18. Um, typically because they have adult style panels after that time and they don't want kids wandering into them. So anything that has like a mature theme to it, maybe anime that's rated R or mature, they don't want people like wandering into the theater and accidentally seeing it. So that does make sense. But overall, there is no age limit to cosplay. You do you and have a fun time regardless of how old or how young you are. So let's go to misconception number two. And this is um, kind of like a commonly argued misconception because I've definitely met people that are on one side of it and people that are on the other side of it. But the misconception is that if you're cosplaying as a character that's not from a Japanese or Asian anime, it is not considered cosplay, it's just considered dressing up. Um, 
I find this misconception to be kind of funny because I have been to a lot of conventions and I will tell you probably 50-60% of the cosplayers there are not from an anime, they're not from anything that's Asian or Japanese influenced at all. A lot of them dress up as Disney characters, cartoon ca characters, movie characters, um, famous people, like I have seen everything and everything in between at conventions. So I feel personally that it is cosplay if you put on a costume and you go to a cosplay convention, the end. Like that's it. There, there really is no limits or rules about like what you should be dressing up as or like if it needs to come from an anime. Like if you're super into anime and you want to dress up as a character from it, awesome, go for it. You know, convention is a good time to dress up as it because most people are going to know what that character is. Um, if you want to dress up from a kid's TV show or if you want to dress up from maybe a Disney movie, it doesn't matter. Go for it. You're there to have a good time and to have fun. Um, and there are no rules. There's no rules like posted that say you can't dress up as character if it's not from this. Um, I also think that there are a lot of shows that aren't technically animes but are done in the same style as an anime. So like Avatar The Last Airbender. Technically, it's not an anime because it's not from Japan or an Asian country. However, it is done in the style of an anime. So when you dress up from it, um, you know, where would that rule fall with that? Would it be considered dressing up as a cosplay character or not? Um, either way, I think you should just dress up as whatever you're interested in and whatever costume you want to make and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Okay, so we're gonna move on to number three in the misconception list. And this misconception has been obviously disproven like a million times, but people still bring it up, which is you're not a real cosplayer if you buy your costume. You're only a real cosplayer if you make it, which I think is total BS. Um, let's be honest, there are tons of companies and people out there that make super, super awesome costumes that you wanna buy. And if you can't buy a costume without be con being considered a non-cosplayer, like these companies and people would go out of business. They wouldn't be able to make money. Um, I think that there's a lot of times where you're not going to be able to totally make your costume. You're gonna have to buy a piece because you don't know how to make it or sculpt it or cast it or how to attach it or whatever. And that shouldn't disqualify you from being a cosplayer. The only time this is ever going to be like an actual problem is that if you join a cosplay contest, so if you're going to a convention and you actually sign up for the official cosplay contest, when you do that, you are in the rules, it is stated that you need to make your costume, or if you're just modeling for an artist, they have to be there with you to say that they handmade it themselves. Um, this is the only time you'd ever run into an issue and that's because the whole point of the contest is that so you can show off your creating skills. Um, I also just feel like this is more elitism than it is anything else where there is this odd idea that if you don't make a cosplay costume then you aren't worthy of wearing it, um, which I think is also very stupid. I think when you go to conventions, you're gonna to meet tons and tons of people that are from like all walks of life and all skill levels and all, um, you know, some people are there because they only model costumes, they don't make them. And some people are there because they're makeup artists and some people are there because they're photographers. Like everyone should be able to dress up there and not feel like they're being judged for not making a costume. Okay, so let's move on to misconception number four, which is cosplay is a career. And <laughs> oh my gosh, this is one of those things where um, I feel like people watch TV shows and they watch, um, you know, maybe documentaries or whatever, and they're only seeing the career side of cosplay so they just kind of assume that like everyone that does cosplay is doing it because one day that's what they want to do for like their full-time job and this is 100% not true because 90% of cosplayers are people that just do this because it's fun and it's a hobby there's maybe maybe 10% that are actually getting paid to do cosplay and I would say probably half of those people are also getting paid to do cosplay because of 
other things because they are a makeup artist that is being paid to do makeup or because they are a professional model and doing cosplay work is just part of it. Um, most people that you'll find on YouTube that um, are professional cosplayers don't just do cosplay, they also model for like clothing companies, for magazines, um, for lots of different things and cosplay is just one of those categories that they happen to model for or do videos for. Um, but realistically, most people are not going to make cosplay into a career. It's very timely. Um, it's mostly just a series of like chance. Like even if your skill is 100% the most incredible thing ever, it's also like acting where you can move to Los Angeles, you can move to New York, you can take all the classes you want, you can up your skill level 100%. But that does not mean you're going to be famous and make a lot of money from doing it. It's like a totally random thing. If it happens, it's mostly networking. It's who you know, where you are, you know, what you do, what kind of attention you can get from it. Um, I think also nowadays that there is Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, like a lot of social networking sites, we see a lot of cosplayers that um, are getting a lot of attention for their costumes and so a lot of people get really excited and see these people and see how um, well known they are and they think if I dress up just like them and do exactly what they do I'm going to also be famous and well known as well which unfortunately is not how the world works and most of the, most of these people unfortunately will crash and burn and kind of learn the hard way that that's not typically how this goes. Um, I will also say that for like myself, um, finding out that cosplay was even a thing was just going to my first convention and being like, oh, people do dress up and people do do this. This is like a real thing that average everyday people get dressed up in costumes, go to this for a weekend and then go back on Monday to their, you know, nine to five normal everyday jobs and lives. Um, so I think for the most part, cosplay is more of a hobby. It's just something you do in your free time that's fun. Um, it's kind of like a way to creatively express yourself, show people your skills, um, interact and make new friends. It's more of those things. Um, cosplay as a career is much, much more rare and based mostly on luck. So something to keep in mind. Um, okay, and then let's get down to this last misconception. This is the worst misconception. It is so bad. So to just start you guys off, this misconception is that cosplay is sexy, provocative, or has um, underlying mature themes. So as I say this, it's like so embarrassing because this is such a common misconception that this is also one of the reasons we don't really talk to people that aren't into anime cosplay convention kind of life and know what it is because the moment that you bring up the word cosplay that's the first thing people think of um when i so let me just tell you guys a quick story so one of my close friends when i first got her into going to conventions um she had watched anime before she didn't really know what cosplay or convention stuff was um, we kind of introduced her into this world and like me, she also has a full-time job and like, you know, just a normal life, coworkers, family, all that stuff. So the first year that we took her and um, typically if you're going to a convention, a lot of them are Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're like a three day thing. So you have to, you know, take that Friday off of your work life and a lot of work, you know, jobs want to know like why you're taking the day off. So. For her, she had discussed with us, like, should I tell my job, like, what I'm going to do? If I tell them, do you think I'm going to have to, like, explain it and they're going to be confused by it? Or, like, they're going to think I'm not professional and all this stuff. And I tried to convince her, like, you know what? Like, a lot of professional people go and do cosplay. This is not a huge deal. If they have an issue with it, you know, they can look it up and research it themselves. So she ended up telling them that she was just going to a convention but did not mention the word costume cosplay or anything in between and she asked us not to tag her in any pictures that were online just so that she wouldn't have to worry about her um co-workers seeing her in a costume so it's kind of weird that there is this weird really i don't know like really odd misconception that like all cosplayers walk around in bikinis act provocative maybe do some like 
underlying like mature things in their free time they don't want to talk about and I hate this misconception because it totally goes it totally takes away from like the fact that you're using a lot of skills a lot of free time you're having to like learn all these different crafts and like perfect them to make your costume or to wear it or to alter it and the underlying theme of you're only doing this to look sexy or get attention to your body just takes away from that and it makes you feel less than which is not okay this misconception is also because i feel like a lot of female cosplayers or a lot of cosplayers in general that have a lot of attention online um, tend to post very seductive pictures or maybe pictures with less clothing and that kind of is like what people first see when they look online. So one of the comments that I was reading um, on these YouTube videos that I have been watching to get inspiration was a girl who said when she was younger, she really wanted to go to a convention and cosplay for the first time. She was 13 years old. So she told her mom this and her mom had no clue what cosplayer convention was. So she went online and just typed, you know, cosplay convention costume, like into Google to see what this whole world was. And of course the first pictures that popped up were girls with very large busts and butts in provocative poses with very few clothing items on. And she took one look at that and told her 13 year old daughter, there is no way in hell I'm going to let you go to a, an event like this. So obviously right off the bat, there is a huge, huge misconception that like all people that cosplay are going to be doing stuff like that are going to be looking like that or the people that go to conventions are only going to see people that look like that. Um, so it's just, it's one of those things that yes, there are people out there that only do cosplay because they just want to show off their bodies and they are wearing, wearing very little clothing to do that. However, I would say the biggest portion of cosplayers are everyday average people that just want to create a costume and go show it off and have fun with their friends. The whole body thing and being sexy and provocative has absolutely nothing to do with these people. They are doing it more to show off their skills and that they're able to craft these amazing creative creations and um, to also go out and just have fun with their friends and have a good time at a convention. Go to panels, learn about things, meet voice actors, um, meet other creators, meet other people in the industry that are also well-known or famous. Um, it has nothing to do with being sexy or provocative. But unfortunately, you know, the 90% of people that do this aren't the ones that are getting all the attention. The people that are getting all the attention are the ones who are being more provocative. So that is kind of like the, unfortunately, the double standard to this. So, as all misconceptions, they came from somewhere. However, that's not the entire case. Like if you were to look at the entire life of a cosplayer, that is not what this is all about. It's about so much more and this world is so much bigger um, than people kind of imagine. So to kind of end this video, I want to say that all these misconceptions can easily be disproven. Obviously, I just went through and like disproved them all. But if someone brings up to you one of these misconceptions or makes a remark about it, or maybe you have a family or friend, whatever, some person who has this misconception in their head and they bring it up, like respectfully just tell them the truth and explain that yes, there are people who believe this. However, 99% of us don't believe this stuff because this isn't real life for us. Our real life is much more realistic and like not like this. Um, so anyways, yeah, thanks everyone for listening to this video and me rant on and on and on about these topics. And I'll be back again to do more videos about cosplay convention topics. If you guys have questions, if you guys have comments, whatever, throw them at me. Um, I'm just here getting excited for SoccerCon 2019, which is coming up in like two months. And crossing my fingers, I get the last parts of my costume on time because this is the first year I have bought all my costumes and all the pieces. Not to say that I'm not at home right now altering every single piece because I am a crazy person who is like, you know, crazy about details and perfection. But 
It is interesting to see the difference between buying costumes and making them all yourselves. I feel like I'm putting in just as much work just in a different way. So um, anyways, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good day and see you back here for the next video. Okay, bye.